One of the most debated puzzles in Indian prehistory is how and when did early humans come here, what were they like, and what other creatures coexisting with them did. In December 1982, while excavating in the heart of India's Narmada Valley, a geologist stumbled upon an unexpected find. Arun Sanakia, then serving the Geological Survey of India, excavated a hominid skullcap fossil from the Pleistocene period. This find reverberated across the paleoanthropology community, spotlighting South Asia in the annals of human prehistory. Certain specialists posited the skull might stem from an ancestral species, Homo heidelbergensis, or possibly represent a hybrid of Homo species, whereas Sonakia proposed a connection with Homo erectus. This specimen stands as the most ancient human fossil discovered on the South Asian subcontinent. Despite differing scholarly views, analysis suggests the fossil dates back to between 250,000 and 150,000 years ago. For many years, it remained South Asia's sole ancient human fossil, in contrast to the plentiful tool and artifact discoveries. However, in recent times, over a dozen additional fossil finds have illuminated the central Narmada Valley as a significant site of human evolutionary progress. Between 1983 and 1992, and then again from 2005 to 2010, paleoanthropologist Anik R. Sankyan and his crew unearthed new fossils, highlighting the area's importance in evolutionary history. According to him, this valley served as a crucial junction on the migration path from Africa to Southeast Asia for Homo erectus an ancient human ancestor who inhabited regions from eastern Africa to China and Southeast Asia between roughly 1.9 million and 100,000 years ago. It remains unclear if Homo erectus represents a single species with wide geographic spread or multiple species with regional differences. Sankian links the Namada Valley to some of the advanced Aculean stone tool cultures that appeared alongside Homo erectus in Europe and Africa. Aculean tools, recognized for their versatile hand axes, were employed in various tasks from chopping wood to slaughtering animals. In the central Namada Valley, findings presented in Sankian's 2020 paper in Advances in Anthropology suggest the presence of at least two separate hominin types the sizable, robust variety identified through Sanakia's skullcap find, and a short and sturdy hominin lineage dating from 150,000 to 40,000 years ago, unearthed by Sankian and his team. Sankian notes that the skullcap uncovered by Sanakia displays a mixture of characteristics seen in Homo erectus, Homo sapiens, and possesses unique features, rendering its identification perplexing. He deduced that the skullcap might also be indicative of Heidelbergensis, potentially even a Heidelbergensis-Neanderthal hybrid. A skull exhibiting such diverse traits hints at the possibility that this area might have been a crossroads for multiple species, challenging our modern understanding of human diversity. Heidelbergensis an ancestor to both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, first emerged 700,000 years ago and vanished around 200,000 years ago. This species acted as a bridge between Homo erectus and later humans, including Neanderthals. Likely the earliest humans to master fire and hunt large prey, the individual associated with Sonakia's find probably utilized actually in hand axes and was discovered near a Stegodon's crushed molar, a now extinct mammoth cousin. Sankian paints a picture of the valley's lower Paleolithic ecosystem as a warm wooded forest inhabited by megafauna like the Stegodon. He has coined the term Homo narmadensis 
for the short and sturdy lineage. This group thrived in the central Narmada Valley during the Middle to Upper Paleolithic periods, hunting smaller fauna within a fragmented forest environment. The discovery of Narmadensis was alongside numerous Mode 3 Aculean tools, which are technologically more advanced than the Mode 2 tools associated with the Heidelbergensis lineage. Paleoanthropologist Sankyan theorizes that the short and stocky hominin lineage may have been the precursor to India's ancient short-bodied populations, including the Andaman Island pygmies. Intriguingly, he posits that the Homo floresiensis of Indonesia, who stood just over three feet tall and existed between 100,000 and 50,000 years ago, could have evolved from this lineage as well. Sankyan points out that since 2010, the Anthropological Survey of India, a government entity, has not undertaken additional excavations. He mentions that there have been sporadic attempts at trial excavations by individuals from other departments, though these efforts have not uncovered anything of substantial significance. As research progresses, it's expected that further insights will be gained into the diverse types of hominins that inhabited the central Namada Valley over the last several hundred thousand years and their interactions. This ongoing exploration underscores South Asia and India specifically as a pivotal region in the study of human evolution, which may significantly influence the region's self-perception and its narrative of prehistory and history. For many years, many in India have advocated the theory that South Asians and Indo-Europeans originated from within India. Although this claim lacks accuracy and simplicity, the evolutionary narrative of hominins in the central Narmada Valley opens a new chapter to argue that hominins, or early humans, had their beginnings in India. However, the effort to connect modern India directly with the subcontinent's prehistoric past and its global standing comes with its risks and prospects. Similar to India, fossil records from South Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, Georgia, and China reveal these locations as recurrent hubs of prehistoric populations, asserting their roles in the worldwide incremental process of human evolution. This perspective offers the non-aligned or interconnected Global South a compelling new narrative of origin, fostering improved relationships based on evidence. While ongoing research will clarify the scientific facts, the interpretation of these findings within the broader human saga will ultimately be shaped by politics, geopolitics, and the choices made by communities around the globe. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more such videos.